Thank you everyone for coming and thank you the recruiters for participating in our panel event. And for the student, please hold your question until the very end. We will have time for you for your questions. So I will go ahead with the icebreaker. And so um, the recruiters, please say your name, your firm, and answer the question. Uh, what's the best advice that you have ever been given? And I will go with uh, Nancy Joyce first. Hello, I'm Nancy Choi. I'm the Associate Director of Recruiting for HCDT. I've been with the firm for all, over 10 years. I think I'm going on 15. Um, I started my recruiting career at a big four firm, did campus recruiting there, and now as the Associate Director, I oversee all of the hiring at HCDT. So I'm filling in for Megan O'Donnell, who is your campus um, recruiter. She's at a different event today. <clears throat> And I guess my piece of best piece of advice was early on in my career. Um, I was told by, you know, someone, um, I think it was my manager actually at the time that, um, you know, if you want, if you see yourself in another position or if you see yourself advancing to another position, you know, emulate, emulate some of those like, you know, traits and things that other people are doing at that level versus waiting until you get promoted. So that was one of the best advice I was given. It was just act like it, you know, and try to, um, you know, take on some of the responsibilities and traits of someone you admire and want to be like. Um, and that way, you know, you can start on your path, your career path on the right foot, and hopefully you get there. Thank you, Nancy Joyce. And um, uh, I, can, I can now go with Tara. And can you pop on each other after you finish your answer? Thank you. Sure. Um, so my name is Tara Williams. I used to be our Southern California campus recruiter, but my uh, last day doing that was Friday. So I actually transitioned to a new role at the firm and uh, Molly is filling my place. So she's going to shadow me tonight. So um, I'll let her introduce herself and then we can both say advice. <laughs> Hi there. My name is Molly Savant. And as Tara just said, yes, I will be the Southern California campus recruiter for um, with Armanino, and um, I'm very excited to be here today and meet you all. Yeah, so my best piece of advice, this sounds so cliche, but um, it's not what you know, it's who you know, as has played out in my whole life. Um, so really networking can get you way far further than um, what technical skills you know, or at least in my experience. So every opportunity I've had is only because I've networked with people. So it really is crucial. Molly, do you have any words of wisdom you want to share? I am a walking figure for that because I wouldn't have been at Armanino if I didn't use my resources and um, connect with people here because I was working in New York for five years and didn't know any others in the LA area. So I would definitely say that that's a best, one of the best things of advice to say for now. Thank you. And I'll popcorn Garrett. Well, thank you, Tara. Uh, thank you, Molly. Uh, my name is Garrett. I'm a campus recruiting manager with Baker Tilly. Up until November, we were a firm called uh, Squire Milner. Uh, my undergraduate degree is in accounting. Um, I have my CPA license. Uh, I was an auditor for the firm for about four years before kind of transitioning over to uh, the campus recruiting role. I left a bunch of stuff out, but um, that's the short version of the story. Um, very excited to be here tonight. Um, thanks for having us. Uh, I guess a couple of things here, if I can steal it for a second in the chat. Um, I'm just going to drop a registration link for us. This is just this just lets us know that you are here. Um, fill this out whenever you can tonight. Don't need to do it right now, but thank you for that. And then best piece of advice I think I, I was ever given. I, I kind of think I want to echo what Molly said. I, I think there's like so a lot of advice given on like there there's um. There's a lot of things that you can do and try and like try to do as many of them as you can. Um, there's like a lot of opportunities for you both you know, at CSUN and then also elsewhere where you'll kind of feel like, ah, like uh, I'm tired or like, ah, I'm really comfortable. I just like finished an episode of Ted Lasso and I want, I want to watch the next one. But like, I'm not going to go do that. I'm not going to go to a chapter uh, meeting. I'm not going to go to an event. I'm not going to go to a networking thing. But like, trust me, you'll be a lot happier if you go to these things. Like always try to do as much as you can. And then especially at the firm, I think for, you know, those of us who have been here for a while now, Nancy, myself, for example, it, it, it's, there's so many things that happen when you do kind of say yes 
to opportunities that present themselves, even if it's outside of your comfort zone. So try to do as much as you can wherever you are um, and you never know what's going to happen. So that's, uh, that was some advice that was shared with me a long time ago. And I feel like it's been pretty good. Go we'll after popcorn, popcorn, Nancy, then. You already went, Nancy. Um, Lindsay. Thanks, Garrett. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. My name is Lindsay. I am the campus recruiter for CBiz. I recruit for all of our California locations. Um, I have been with the firm uh, about 10 years less than Nancy. I've been there about seven months. So I am fairly new to this role. I came from engineering recruiting on the campus side from Northrop Grumman, and I'm very happy to be here. Um, the best piece of advice came to me in college. One of my professors said, and it was so simple and like cliche, but your life is your responsibility. And coming into this role and coming into recruiting, it's so true, you know, as students, you're expected to know, you know what you wanna do and you, you listen to all of these different people in your life, your parents, your friends, your teachers, whoever. At the end of the day, you know they're not the one that's living this day to day. They're not the one that's doing this internship or this class or this job, it's you. And so that was the best piece of advice I learned is that you've gotta figure out what you want out of your life. And if something isn't working or if it's not going well, you're the only one that has the power to change it words of advice for you. Um, I will popcorn over to Amy. Thank you. Um, hi guys, my name is Amy Thompson. I'm the HR coordinator slash campus recruiter for Markham in our LA office. Um, I have been with Markham since March, so I'm fairly new. Um, and this is one of my first few uh, campus recruiting events, actually. So, you know, bear with me. Um, I would say my best advice, again, may be a little cliche or a lot cliche, um, <laughs> is that, um, you know, just do the best you can. Don't whine, complain, make excuses about your work. Um, just do the best you can. Nobody can do more than that. Um, and I think that goes, you know, professionally and personally um, and can just kind of help you relax in a work setting, for example, especially at Markham as an entry level associate. We're not expecting you to be able to do manager level work, um, even if you feel like that's what you need to give. Um, we just want you to do your best. Um, we have people around to answer questions and help you be the best. Um, but you know, what you give is what you get in the situation. And so, you know, just, we just want you to try your best. <laughs> so, um, and then similar to Garrett, I'm going to be putting a, a little check-in link um, if you'd like to fill that out when you can. Thank you. Thank you, Emmy and Iman. Oh. We still have one more person. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ahmad Khoury. I'm the National Director of Talent Acquisition. Here at Cohen Resnick, I oversee both campus and experience recruiting. I'm filling in for Keith Hines. Keith reached out this morning very early to tell me that he wasn't feeling well, that if, if I could fill in for him, and I did jump on the opportunity. I have not had a chance to attend a campus event in weeks, so I'm very happy to be here and, and meet all of you. And as you were all talking, I was just imagining this event in person, how different it would be, but we will, we will take it. Virtual, we will take it. Um, I've been with the firm for almost six years, coming from another accounting firm uh, where I was for 11 years, Baker Tilly. Uh, prior to that, very different world. Um, not necessarily recruiting in HR, but very different world, not public accounting. Uh, the best advice is to keep an open mind. You never know where life is going to take you. And I know you go to college and accounting professors are telling you you need to do audit, you need to do tax, you need to do this, do that. Have conversations. And I think this advice aligns with the advice that was given earlier to network, meet people, keep an open mind, push yourself. 
eventually things will fall into place. But if you if you don't have an open mind, you might not end up where you, you're you're you'll have the most fun. It'll be the most successful. So, and that's the best piece of advice I've I've always given myself. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to recruiters. So uh, I will go ahead with the first question that I have right here. So can each of you talk about your application process, the requirements, and the due date? And can each of you popcorn each other after you finish your answer? And I will start with uh, Amy. Sure. So um, our application process, so all of our positions are posted on Handshake. Um, and so we have um, staff level positions and interns for both our tax and assurance departments um, available. And then we also have um, an, an application for our summer leadership program that will be next May. Right now it is still virtual, um, but that may change, you know, as things change in the world. Um, our requirements um, are very lax. So we are, the only requirement um, is that you are an accounting major. Um, that is the big one for us. The other things are are considered, but you know, things change. We're, we're looking for um, the best person as a whole and not just the best person on a resume. Um, and then our application deadlines are this Sunday, September 26th. Thank you. And then I'll, I'll pass this on to Molly. I can take this for you, Molly. Um, so yeah, very similar. All of our positions are posted on Handshake. Uh, so you can apply that way. You can also apply on our website, which it's the same thing. Um, we only require that you apply on our website. You do not need to apply on Handshake as well. So we are hiring for interns and associates in audit, business management, consulting, risk assurance and advisory, and tax. So in order to be eligible for an associate position, you need to graduate or be CPA eligible, whichever comes later, December 2021 to August 2022. And it's same for interns just a year later, so December 2022 to August 2023. Um, our application deadline is also September 26th at 11.55 p.m. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's it. So I will popcorn to Nancy. Hi, well, ours is pretty much the same as well. We have positions um, for tax and audit internships as well as full-time. Um, the requirements are all pretty similar with your CPA eligibility date probably being more important than your graduation date. We wanna make sure that you're done with your requirements before you can start working. Um, and so the graduation date range that Tara gave you is pretty much what we're looking for as well for full-time staff and then also for summer 2022 internships. Um, our process is on our job site, so I did put the link in the chat box. Um, you can find our postings on Handshake as well, but you don't have to apply there. You would have to actually apply on our job site. And we have a variety of positions there as well as the location it's attached to. Um, so just make sure that you pick the one that you want to apply to and work out of. Um, and I think that might be it. A popcorn, Imad? Sure, thank you, Nancy. I think it's very consistent with everyone. Um, all our positions are posted on our website and Handshake. It's important that you apply on our website. You don't have to apply to both. Uh, the requirements are the same. We expect you to have complete, you'll be eligible for the CPA exam by the time you start. Uh, we have internship opportunities in 2022 and as an entry level tax audit and advisory. On the advisory side, we have three different verticals. We have the global consulting services, all the technology practices, cybersecurity, risk advisory, CFO advisory. And then you have all the government and public sector opportunities. Uh, that are open as well. Uh, advisory opportunities are across the country. And so are all the other opportunities, audit and tax. We don't necessarily limit our opportunities to California. Uh, we also have internship opportunities in 2023 that we're recruiting for. You'll see that on our website as well. And our deadline is this Sunday as well. And I'm popcorning this to Lindsay. Thank you. Um, 
going to echo everybody else's. We do have all of our positions posted on Handshake. However, we do ask that you apply on our website. You can find that at cbizcampus.com. Um, our deadline is October 1st. However, I am hosting Northridge first round interviews next Tuesday. And so if you'd like to be considered for those, please apply by this Friday. Um, we currently have audit, tax, advisory, and forensic litigation positions open, both in internships and entry level uh, throughout our nine offices in California. Um, that's all I've got for you. Uh, Garrett, you want to finish us off? Absolutely. My favorite topic, interview dates. So um, our deadline to apply is actually very soon. It is September 22nd. So that's Wednesday evening at 11.55 p.m. Um, we are hiring uh, full-time and internship positions uh, in 2022 throughout all of our offices throughout the country. Um, you will see the jobs listed on Handshake. They'll, they'll just be audit associate, audit internship, tax internship, tax associate. So you're not going to necessarily see the location through Handshake. That'll be through our website. So you will apply both through Handshake and our website. Sorry to make you guys fill out two different sets of information. But our website allows you to get a little bit more specific with kind of location and different aspects um, um, in that regard. Um, so yeah, so on Handshake, our website and September 22nd, our interviews will be, I believe, on September 29th. So coming up very, very soon. Um, if you're curious or you want to know more information or something that's, that just doesn't look right there, feel free to reach out to me. You can email me whenever you like, and I'll, I'll, clear, I'll clear up as much as I can. All right. Thank you all so much for your answers. And for our next question, what different opportunities do you have for sophomores, juniors, and seniors? And will students have the opportunity to do a rotational internship in your firms? Um, since Garrett went last, we could start with him. And the popcorn. Sure. Yeah. Work our, work our way back. Um, so yeah. So uh, I'll, I guess we'll start off with saying the typically speaking, the full-time position you're going to be looking at um, whenever you graduate. Right. So it's, it's about a year out from that. Um, could be sooner than that, but for uh, graduate students, seniors, um, you're looking at applying for full-time positions, um, juniors, seniors, um, you're looking at applying for internship positions, Typically speaking, we'd like you to have a term left of school in between your internship and your graduation date. Uh, internship, yep, graduation date. Um, not always the case, so don't limit yourself. Uh, please do not think that, that there's a pecking order in terms of, oh, I don't have any experience, so I'll apply for an internship first and then an associate position. It's more based on what everyone else was kind of talking about, the CPA eligibility dates. That's going to dictate whether or not it's a full-time associate position or an internship position with most of our firms. Um, for sophomores out there, we actually do, we are working on a program that we'd like to call BT Prep, which is very basic tax return stuff that is available to sophomores. Um, just a way of dipping your toe into the tax world to see if you like it or not, right? Um, and then we do not offer any rotational internship at the firm um, it's just something that we don't feel like, you know, the internships at eight to 10 weeks are short enough already. We kind of feel like chopping them up into three or four weeks of each little um, division is, is not sufficient for you to get a really good feel um, for what each service line and profession is like. So we don't offer any rotations at our firm. But the popcorn, Lindsay. All right. Um, echoing what Garrett said, yes, that 150 hour date is a uh, number is important. Um, we tend to like to have, like if you're graduating in May 2022, you can have that internship in the spring. We do offer spring, summer, and fall internships. And our firm is a, is a proponent of those audit and tax rotational programs over the summer. So you have that full-time um, period to be able to test out audit and tax. We offer that both in our Los Angeles, San Diego, um, and Oxnard locations. So you're able to kind of try out both. We are in between figuring, we're figuring out our career academy situation. Um, unsure what that will be. However, when it's decided, we'll let you know. Um, popcorn over to Nancy. Um, not too different here. 
Softwares will typically, like it's a typical situation would be for with HCBT, you would apply to attend our SLP. So we do have a program called Step Forward that we host. But, you know, unfortunately during COVID, we had to um, condense it down to a few hours virtual. But, you know, forever back in person, it's an all day event and you'll meet a lot of people there networking, also team building and whatnot. Um, juniors, so like Garrett said, in between your last semester or last year in college, that summer before, you would be doing an internship with us. And our internship is either audit, tax, or valuation. Um, and right now, we did have two summers of virtual internships. Um, hopefully next summer, we can actually have some of our interns in person um, in the office. But that is typically what you would do. Not to say that we've hired sophomores as interns before. So if you're a sophomore with some accounting under your belt, um, and you might be graduating year and a half, maybe even two years um, from that summer that you want to intern, we will still, you know, review your application and you might not get priority, um, to be honest, but if we do have more spots available, we also do interview sophomores for a potential internship. Um, so talk to me, talk to Megan, if you are interested, if you're a sophomore. If you're a junior, I would just encourage you to directly apply. Popcorn. I don't know if it's Tara or Molly who's going to answer. Yeah, you guys can just call on me, Molly. Okay. <laughs> me today. Um, yeah, so very similar to everyone else for sophomores, we have our summer leadership program and we recruit for that in the spring. So we're not currently recruiting for that right now. For juniors, we have winter and summer internships in audit, business management, consulting, risk assurance and advisory, and tax. And then for seniors, we recruit for full-time opportunities, uh, associate positions. So we don't have a rotational internship, very similar to Garrett's reasoning why they don't have a rotational internship, but we do have an internal mobility program. So let's say you're out of the firm for a year, you choose audit, you really decide tax was the path for you. We have infrastructure so that you can move to a different department and it doesn't even need to be audit tax. Like you can move into HR, you can move into finance. Um, there's a variety of different things. We wanna make sure you can stay at the firm and, and do what you love. So I will popcorn to Amy. Hello, yeah, similar to almost everyone here, um, our um, opportunities for a senior, we would have you apply to a staff position, um, juniors, an internship, and then sophomores. Um, we do have our summer leadership program. Um, in the Los Angeles office, we only do internships during the summer, or we only start internships during the summer. Um, there are some internships who end after the six weeks, and then there are some we keep all year long. Um, and so that's where uh, we only have one start date um, as we tend to keep our interns, and then we just have them all year long. And then uh, for the senior um, level, um, again, similar to what Nancy said, um, if you are don't have experience or don't have any prior experience, I would still suggest you apply to the staff position. Um, more often than not, once we decide to hire somebody for the staff, um, there is that six month waiting period. Um, and we tend to just bring you on as an intern anyways, um, part-time, full-time, whatever works with your schedule. Um, that way you still have um, that six months to kind of study for the CPA exam, um, but this way you can also start with Markham um, and make a little extra cash on the side. Um, and so I will popcorn to Imad. Thank you, Amy. Like everybody said, I'm just going to do it a little bit differently because the sophomore, junior, senior is completely messed up with the, with the CPA eligibility. <clears throat> if you're set to hit the credit requirements by 2024, you can apply for the 2023 internships. They're posted on our career site. If you're set to graduate with the, the requirement, the credit requirements in 2023, then you'll apply for an internship, audit, tax, or advisory winter or summer of 2022. If you're completing the requirements by a spring of 2022, you'll apply for the staff, the associate positions, audit tax, as well as advisory. When I say advisory, the advisory does not meet the requirements of the 150. None of the advisory practices at Cohn Resnick actually require the, the, the credit hour um, necessary for the CPA exam. 
but those are some of the opportunities. We do not have a rotational program. That said, we have some very small offices across the country just because of the, bus the, the their, their business model allow for interns to do a little bit of tax, a little bit of audit, a little bit of private client service work, but they're very rare. There are some internal mobility opportunities though. You can start an audit and eventually change your mind and you can go into tax or you can completely exit um, the accounting world and go into advisory or exit the accounting advisory world altogether and transit into HR, marketing, IT, finance, or what have you. So. Uh, thank you everyone for your useful answers. So I will go with the next question. Do you have any opportunities for DACA students or international students, such as unpaid internships or sponsorship? And uh, Nancy Joyce, can you go first? Yeah, DACA students are actually um, the same as like any other student to us. So they can apply for an internship. They can also apply for full-time positions. Um, all DACA students will just have to make sure that they're up to date with like, you know, their requirements or renewing their DACA status and whatnot. So um, as long as, you know, they're current with their status, then we will accept all applications. Okay, uh, Amy? Hello. So for our opportunities, um, we will consider a DACA student, um, just as we would any other um, applicant, um, but we do not have any unpaid um, positions within Markham. Um, all of our um, opportunities are paid. And so similar to Nancy, um, if you have a sponsorship from a previous employer, um, we will transition that over to Markham. Um, but Markham will not sponsor any entry level um, positions. And then I will popcorn over to Lindsay. Thanks, Amy. Um, unfortunately, CBIS campus does not sponsor students. We don't offer any unpaid internships. Um, however, our experience side does. So once you have at least one year of public accounting experience, you're welcome to apply to our experience side and they will um, sponsor. And popcorn to Garrett. Yeah, not a whole lot to add here. Um, we don't offer any unpaid positions at all. Um, kind of like what Nancy was saying, it's, it's treated like any other applicant would be. So um, there's, yeah, there's nothing um, out of the ordinary, out of the usual um, to do there. Um, so I guess popcorn Imad. Sure, thank you, Garrett. Same here. Um, in terms of DACA students, we they're considered the same as any other student as long as they're ensuring that their status is valid uh, and they can work. We do not offer sponsorship at the entry level. On the experience side, at Co Lindsay, we do uh, as long as you've had at least three years of solid, solid audit experience or tax experience or advisory. Um, we offer sponsorship on a case by case basis. We do not offer any un unpaid internships at Con Resnick. I think I'm the only one left. So uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, my ours is very, very similar to Cone Resnick. So fortunately, we don't offer unpaid internships and we are unable to sponsor, but we can once you have some experience and depending on the position. Thank you all for that useful information. And for our next question, this goes out to Garrett, Nancy, and Imad. What is one tip that you can give our students have a successful recruiting journey and what would you have them avoid? And for example, would you recommend connecting with you via LinkedIn or Handshake before an event? We could start with Garrett. Sure, thanks Leander. Um, always, yeah, always reach out any, any way and every way. Smoke signal, carrier pigeon, uh, LinkedIn, email, any way you can, reach out. Um, I don't think any of us would ever be offended at a student for reaching out before an event. I think that's absolutely awesome. Actually, as a matter of fact, it'd probably help because if we know that you're going to be there ahead of time, we can absolutely arrange for certain people to meet you. Um, successful recruiting journey, um, be responsive and, and, and pretty active. Um, time kills all deals. All right. So the, the faster you move on stuff, the faster things get. 
that goes for both of us, you know, for Ahmad and Nancy and I, it's for all of us, um, same thing, right? It, it, it's a two way street. So when you email us and we don't email you back for like a week or two, that's pretty lame, isn't it? Pretty frustrating. Same thing that when we email you guys and you don't respond to something for a week or two, we start to get just as nervous and insecure as you guys are about whether or not you like us or we like you, right? Um, and so things that I wouldn't do, um, there's so much learning that goes on with the recruiting process. I would always start with the recruiter. And if there's a question you're unsure about, test it out on the recruiter. We're usually pretty nice about this stuff and we'll tell you very quickly, ooh, hey, when you are talking to a, a manager or a senior associate, do not ask them that. It's okay that you ask me because you're learning, but when you ask, when you're talking to a professional, here's some stuff that maybe you, you shouldn't ask about, right? So um, I guess there isn't a whole lot of don'ts. Just be kind, respectful, courteous, and, and um, it's a starting point, right? So I guess, um, Nancy, you want to, any, anything to kind of color in there or add or any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think for starters, like when you come to an event, I would say show up, you know, be prepared contribute if you can, ask questions if you can, you know, so in this virtual environment, it's so much harder to stand out, it's so much harder to be recognized, you know, and being remembered, so anything you can, even in the chat box, come off mute if you have a question, I would definitely do that, um, so it, it does help to actually prepare, you know, if you know you're coming to a panel, then and of course, like we want to hear some questions from you as well. If you're going to meet the firms and you have a one-on-one, -on -one, I would definitely do some preparation there before you meet with that person, um, and then continue to show up, you know, if you show up to one event and then drop off, like it's hard to, for us to remember who you are, your resume might show up again, like a few weeks later, or maybe even a couple months later. So it's best that, you know, you continue recruiting. Um, it's a journey, you know, even though sometimes it feels like it's a short period of time, it's still a journey. So, you know, whenever you can, if you have the opportunity to keep showing up to events like this, or going to an individual firm's event as well, keep doing that. Um, don'ts, I would say the opposite of that is coming to an event, but not being prepared, you know, like talking to a professional, but not even knowing who they are or what firm, you know, they came from or anything about the firm, you know, things like that, because that can happen. Um, I think especially being on Zoom, um, I think, you know, students might feel like, oh, like I have the luxury of just kind of sitting there and listening. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you might be caught off guard or you might sign up with somebody to do a one-on-one -on -one and then realize like, you know, you didn't do enough preparation or research and they'll ask you some questions about why you're interested. Um, so I would just say that that direct opposite of like being prepared, just don't come to an event if you're not prepared, you know? So it's, it, it will show through. And so um, definitely take every opportunity and just, you know, do the best you can. But sometimes like even that one time that, you know, you end up, um, just coming off a certain way or, you know, perception is reality. So if a firm perceives you a certain way and you don't want to be perceived that way, it's harder to kind of dig yourself out of that, you know? So that's my advice. And then I think it was Lindsay, right? Or was it? It's a mod. Oh, it's a mod. Okay. You're right. Thank you, Nancy. I would add to this consistency. So I think Nancy mentioned recruiting is a journey. My experience when I was a campus recruiter, the best people I hired were people that I consistently saw on campus, event after event after event. And every time they came up to me or to any other of my uh, you know, coworkers or colleagues, they had questions that they came with that were important questions for them. So one thing I would say when you're doing research and preparing for any event, one, figure out what the firms are, clearly, but also figure out what you want and what your goal is and come up with questions that are important to you because the answers that you'll get are going to get you ready to say yes if you get an offer from that firm. So consistency and research. The other small piece of advice, but it's, it's a big, big pet peeve of mine. Yes, connect with us in any way you want, in any way you'd like, or any way you find us. But if you're sending me a LinkedIn connection, try to make it personal. And try to put something in there to say why you're trying to connect with me. You have no idea, and I'm sure all the recruiters on the call can relate to this. Every day, I get maybe 10 to 15 LinkedIn connection requests, not just from campus um, uh, professionals, but across the board. 
And I would say 99% of them don't even tell me why they want to connect with me. When I look at their profile, I don't see a reason why I would connect with them. And I don't, because I don't think it's a matter of adding number of people in my connections. So if you, if you think I'm somebody you want to connect with, me, Keith Hines, or any one of the recruiters here today, try to make it a little bit more personal and why you want to connect with them. Thank you, Ima. Um, so the next question is to Lindsay, Molly, and Ami. Sometimes students get nervous when talking to professionals, and when you try to tell your story, you don't come off as real or authentic. So what are some tips that you use to avoid this that have worked for you when you were recruiting? So I will go with Lindsay first. Sure. So I think, you know, authenticity a lot is, is tough. And when you have that like elevator pitch or elevator speech, sometimes it can get a little uh, robotic, I think, at least for in, from my experience. Um, I think, you know, practice mates perfect, but having a script down isn't always the best option. Um, my, my favorite thing to do in interviewing is bullet points. And so, when you're asked, you know, tell me about yourself, or you you have that story question, you know, have a couple bullet points to touch on, but don't make it robotic. And that's, you know, again, practice makes perfect. Um, another piece of advice that I think really adds to Garrett and Nancy and Imad's, you know, pieces is going along with that, do your research on a firm, because we can tell when it's inauthentic. If you don't ask any questions, or if you come in saying that you like tax, but then, you know, we say, well, to, why? And you don't have anything prepared. You know, it's, it's important to just know why you're doing what you're doing and, and know yourself a little bit before you come to events and be prepared, like, like Nancy had mentioned. I feel like that was a big round robin um, approach to that answer, but I'm gonna pass it on to Amy. Yeah, so I would, I would say, most of the advice that I was going to give is very similar to what Lindsay had just said. Um, practice what you're going to say. Um, you can easily kind of Google like top 10 interview questions and many of them I'm sure some of us use. Um, and so you'll know kind of the general idea of what we're going to be asking beforehand. Um, and again, like Lindsay said, we don't, you don't need to write exactly word for word what you are going to say, um, but having the bullet points or just notes on kind of the key things you want to bring up um, is the best way to kind of, the best way to um, get about what you're going to say. And that way you, it, you'll be saying things off the top of your head and so that way they won't sound as robotic or scripted. And then I will popcorn this too. I believe it's Tara. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you guys really stole what I was going to say. So I'm glad we're all aligned at least. Um, but just to add on and echo a little bit, since I was a CSUN student and did all of these things, um, just like Lindsay and Amy said, I would write down like I'm pretty good at talking to clearly I'm a recruiter but I would practice what I was going to say so it sounded professional it sounded concise and I would like write little bullets and every time I was driving somewhere I was walking somewhere I probably looked like a crazy person but I would always talk to myself and be like hi I'm Tara and I would like practice this whole thing so I sounded authentic also make sure you're like smiling that'll add like natural inflection in your voice um also the best conversations you have are people are asking you about you and you're asking about them and you're learning things about them. I think one of my pet peeves is when people are like, um, I want to know what culture's like and what's your work life balance. And they're just asking something that I know other students are like, hey, hey, you should ask this, write this down, you should ask this. It becomes way more interesting when you can tell they're asking you genuine things that they want to know. And I think that that takes some prep of thinking, 
what matters to me? What are my values? What am I looking for in a company? And then you frame your questions around that instead of doing what other people tell you or what you hear other people doing on this call. That can definitely spark things, but when it's something that genuinely interests you, it comes across genuine. And also ask about the other person. Like be like, you know, if you talk about, I used to always be like, oh, I'm from Santa Clarita. And they'd be like, oh, that's crazy. I'd be like, where are you from? Like, do you live around here? Northridge, whatever. There's like a line where it can be too personal, but also connections are built by like going a little bit deeper than I'm an accounting student and I want a job. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's actually all I was going to say. Ask genuine questions and don't be afraid to get a hair personal more than you're an accounting student and want a job. <laughs> Thank you so much for the helpful information. As for our next question, this will be to Imad, Tara, and Garrett. As the recruiting process will be virtual, could you perhaps give an example of what are the essential things you should include in your introductory to make a great first impression? We could start with Imad, please. What are some of the things you should include to make great first impression? Include in what? In the cover letter? In in um at in the introductory process at networking events, for example. So it's exactly what Tara just said, is to understand what you want. So yes, you're all accounting majors, you all, you all want a job. And the, the newsflash, and I'm sure it's not a newsflash as much, is that all of you will get a job. The economy is doing so well, and accounting firms and other, every organization in this country is looking for accounting majors. So you will get a job. Therefore, you need to know where you want to get that job and what matters to you. In my process, when I'm recruit, when I'm interviewing experienced hires, I ask them the following question. As you think about your next step in your career, what are some of the non-negotiables that if this organization doesn't offer you, you would walk away? So think about the non-negotiables for you. Now, the difference here is that you're starting your career versus somebody who's experienced, who has experience, they know exactly what they're looking for from a, from a technical professional perspective. But for you, as you go into your career, what are some of those non-negotiables? What are you looking for? Better work-life integration, a, a learning environment, a culture that fosters collaboration and teamwork. So I would include all this and wrap it in a genuine interest in the organization you're talking to. And I don't know if the other recruiters on the call will agree with me, but I've always told students ahead of the recruitment process, rank the firms that you wanna to talk to. Which ones are the, the firms that you really care about and they're really interested in, and then go after those firms. Because again, to my point earlier, you will all land an opportunity somewhere and it has to be a place where you wanna be. So be genuine, ask questions that pertain to you, answers to which will allow you to actually make a decision when, when a firm, one of us reaches out and says, congratulations, we wanna offer you an opportunity. Tara? Yeah, sure, that was really good. I totally agree with that. Um, I want to add that the virtual environment can be kind of awkward, even for us recruiters. I, I don't know about you guys, but for me, it can be awkward because when you're in person, you can talk about the weather, you can talk about like, it's hot in there, you need water. Like, I don't know, there's just random things that come up. But when you're placed on camera, you just get spit out together. It can kind of be like, uh, hey, how do, we, how do we start this? So the most, when I'm, impressed with students it's when they're like hey thanks so much for being here like how are you today and if, if you don't mind I'd love to introduce myself and then I'd love for you to do an introduction then we can go into any questions I have like you take the reins if someone that's actually what I do to students but I would much rather prefer that they do it to me because we are really here for you to answer questions for you so I love when people take ownership of that and they're like this is for me I want to I want to learn. So I would say, you know, a good intro is just saying, hi, I'm Tara. I'm a junior accounting student. I am involved in Beta Alpha Psi or Accounting Association. I'm the treasurer, whatever it is. And I'm really looking for internship opportunities in audit. And um, 
then you switch, they introduce, and then you have a list of questions, genuine questions that you make sure you ask them. And I think if someone did that, I'd be like, you're hired. So, um, or I'd be very inclined to put them through to the, to the interview process. So um, that's, that's my advice. And I think with Garrett also answering this. Okay, Garrett, it's all you. I'll, I'll, I'll try. I mean, that's what you guys heard from Imad and Tara is, is absolutely excellent, spot on. Um, I guess I'll try to color in just a few details. It's a personal preference for me. I don't know if everyone on the call, all the recruiters necessarily agree or even professionals. I don't like elevator pitches. Um, I think it puts a lot of pressure on yourself to like deliver this soliloquy and like monologue that's like, like I promise you none of us have sat there and seen like an elevator pitch where we were just like, oh my God, this person is hired. Like it, it, it's a start, <laughs> right? Like, like, I catch myself doing this all the time with colleagues internally. We'll, we'll be having a Zoom call or something like that. And I'll just launch right into like whatever it is I need. Like we're talking about this because I need something. And I'll, hi, how are you? Good morning, right? Like, like slow down a little bit. And when you're meeting someone, just, hi, how are you? I'm Garrett. Very nice to meet you. What's your name? Oh, Tara, very nice to meet you. How long have you been working at the, like, it, it's totally fine to ask the other person about them. I guess I could somewhat caution you in terms of like, we are trying to learn as much about you as you are from us. So if that gets lopsided too much one way or the other, it's a bit of a turnoff, right? Like if you come to one of our firms and I never shut up and I keep talking and you never get to get a word in and I don't know anything about you, that's not a good exchange. If vice versa happens where I now know your entire life story but you have no idea about anything about our company or me, that's also not good. So it does take two to tango here. There's a little bit of give and, and take. And so it goes back and forth between a little bit about me, a little bit about you, a little bit about you, a little bit about me, back and back and forth we go, right? So making a good impression when you're first meeting, whether it's virtual or in person, a lot of that is still the same mechanical construct of just getting to know someone, forget about the job for just a minute. We know, as Imad said, we know that's why you're here and you're going to get a job somewhere. So that's totally okay. Let's start off with just getting to know each other a little bit and kind of to build off of one of the things Imad said that I thought was interesting is um, ask about the things that are kind of important to you. I completely agree with that, but I think one of the struggles on the campus end is knowing what the heck that is, like knowing what is important to you at that point. And so there is a, a compared to an experienced hire, there's a little bit more exploration of that early on. Now, Imad, I'm sure you've had experienced hires that also need to explore what they really want, the non-negotiable stuff. But certainly on the entry level side, as all of you are exploring, try to figure out what it is important to you. And as you zone in, that's where you start to narrow down the, the huge number of questions you have into a smaller number of questions. And you really start to get good at this as you get a little repetition. So I would advise also practice on other firms. I would save the firms on your list that you think are really important to you. Save them until after you've gotten some of your warm ups out of the way. And I absolutely agree, Garrett. You're absolutely right. And it takes more work to figure out what you want at the, at the campus level. One thing I would just want to add what, what Tara said, and forgive me if I'm offending anybody. At this point, we've been virtual for almost 18 months. If some of you are not comfortable with virtual interviews, please start practicing with your friends, with your family, because I don't think this is going away. We're getting the results from research firms about campus and students are asked, 78% of you all, maybe not at CSUN in general, want this process to continue being virtual because of the benefits of it. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to be anywhere. You can go from your class to the interview in no time. So please, please, please practice virtual interviews. They're the same as if you met us in person. So thank you. You just got to look at a slightly different place. Yes, right? you just have to focus on something different. That's got to look into this little dot instead of Imad on the screen. So it's, right. it's, I always feel like that's a little strange, but yeah, he's, he's absolutely right. It's, it's the same mechanical, it's the same. Thank you for your useful answers. So uh, the next question is to Lindsay, Amy, and Nancy. So most season students face the challenge of working along with a full class schedule and family obligations. 
they do not have time to participate in many events as they would like to. So what are some tips for those students on how they can successfully recruit? Sure, I'll, I'll start us off. Um, I think a big thing there is going back to those LinkedIn, those handshake, those extra communications that don't take a lot of time, but they're but if you make them meaningful, they will be meaningful. If you send a follow-up email or an, an inquiry email, I think that is um, going to put you ahead of the game. Also, if you do have a couple extra minutes, I'm a big fan of the informational interview. Now, there's a, there's a good way to go about this, and there's a bad way to go about this. You don't want to just randomly cold call and send a bunch of LinkedIn messages to random people at a company. However, if you reached out to a recruiter and you want more information for a certain uh, specific role and want an informational interview, or you reach out throughout LinkedIn to a second, a second connection, um, I think that puts you ahead of the game and gets you a little more information and you might have a referral for another job at that firm. I'll pass it over to Nancy. Yeah, I mean, I think we try to at least like have events at different times of the day. So, you know, if you cannot show up to an event like during the middle of the day, then hopefully maybe you can show up to one like in the evening. But understandably, like some people have like obligations in the evening as well. Um, but I like, you know, Lindsay said, I think like even finding alumni from your school, like there's tons of alumni at every firm. I think that's a good way to try to make that connection if you're not able to actually attend an event and be there you know, as a formal kind of like recruiting event, um, that's a good way to do it. And that way you already have that commonality with somebody like you're reaching out to. And then from that point on, you know, either they'll just, you know, continue that networking with you, they'll pass you on to recruiter. Um, but communication is key. I mean, even when you're a full-time employee, it's all about communicating. You know, if you're not going to show up to work someday, one day, or if you're late to a meeting, I mean, you know, it, you're, it's forgiven more so like if you're there to communicate it as, as soon as possible versus just not showing up and then after the fact saying like, oh, sorry, I wasn't there, you know, so communication is key. But I would say like that's a good alternative is to find an alumni, you know, at the various firms that you're interested in and make that connection. But if you can, I would really try to at least attend one event, whether it's in the evening or in the daytime, pick one that you can go to. Um, these are good ones just because there's multiple firms there, like even meet the firms because there's so many firms there. Um, but if you have to just do like single events here and there, um, I think it's better maybe just to reach out to alumni so that it's, you don't feel like, you know, that burden of um, trying to take time off your work or, um, you know, if you have family obligations and things like that, that might be a better choice. Um, otherwise, like attending one where more firms are there, I think would be a good use of your time if you can make it. And yeah, then, and then, yeah, Amy. <laughs> I would say, in addition to all of that, you know, if there is one firm that you are, or one or multiple firms that you are severely interested in, um, if you were to look up at Markham's website right now, you would be able to find my email, you'd be able to find um, my manager's email, um, and email you can use 24 hours a day. So, uh, if you just have five minutes, you could just send me an email and say, hey, Amy, I'm super interested in Markham. This is why. Um, here's a little bit about myself. Um, and then we could set up a call if you're available um, whenever you're free. So that way you're not um, limited to just the timing of an event. Um, because it, if you're working and you can't go to one, um, we can set up a 30 minute call at eight in the morning, if that's what works for you. Um, and that way you can still learn about um, your company um, and meet with the recruiter. And that way you kind of still get that interaction with them um, without having to go to a vet, an event if you're not available. Thank you all so much. Uh, that was very helpful. And uh, our next question is going to be, after an interview or a recruiter event, has there been a follow-up email that has left a good impression with you that you still remember to this day? And would there be any tips that you could give students from those? And well, we could start with Nancy and just popcorn everybody. 
Yeah, sure. I mean, I always think like anything like that's personalized, like, you know, always mentioning like a conversation you had, something you learned about that person, you know, and usually like when I get an email, even if it's from somebody that I've never met, I can tell they look me up on LinkedIn, you know, they know a little bit about me and they'll say something in their email. So that always goes, you know, a long ways than something that just looks very generic, something that could be just copy and paste and sent to like 10 different recruiters. So that's always nice to get. Um, I don't know that one sticks out necessarily on the top of my head that I can remember that would like blew me away. Um, but it's always fun if like somebody puts like a fun, you know, line in there. I don't know, like if you're, yeah, if you're a funny person and you can somehow like squeeze that in there, that's always nice. You know, it's, it's a good, it's different from like the tons of emails that I get, you know, that's very professional business-like. If you're able to kind of like stick that in there and still keep it like appropriate and professional, that's always nice. You know, it's different, unique, um, but don't, you know, try too hard being that kind of a person. It's better, like we said, you know, all, all throughout the evening, it's better to be genuine and authentic. Uh, but if you could think of something great, like, you know, if you know, like Garrett, he just mentioned Ted Lasso. I guarantee he watches that show because <laughs> it came up. So, you know, even something like that, for example, you can mention that, hey, I'm a big fan of Ted Lasso as well. You know, that, that's why you have to be attentive because those little things you pick up, it really does make a difference. Yeah, can I just speak to that point? I know this is a little out of order, maybe, um, but it really does go a long way. There's a student that I talked about David Dobrik with and that we both watch him on YouTube. And so now he sends me updates on like his videos and he lives by me. So he's like, look at where he lives. Is this by you? And it's like really funny because I'll always remember him as like the David Dobrik guy. And he'll just email me out of the blue and be like, look at this update. I'm not as into it as he is, but I love his enthusiasm <laughs> anyway. So it it, that really stands out. And also, if we ever go back to being fully in person, when people would send me thank you cards in the in the mail, that went such a long way. And you can still do that. It'll go to someone's office. I don't know when they'll check it. But that always, like, I pin them up on the wall. Like, it makes me feel so good about myself. So those go a long way if we ever go back to that. So. Oh, my gosh. Wait, sorry. I, I just remembered a story. I had a student. I told the student who was an employee at Trader Joe's how much I love Trader Joe's. And so he would send me emails about that. Like, we have a new product. You should try it. Or I tried this. Have you tried it? And I, I actually went to Trader Joe's and tried it. So I had to, yeah, that reminded me of a story, Tara. It goes a long way. It does. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it goes back to being genuine, right? That's what it is. It goes back to being genuine. So if you have a genuine conversation with somebody, and if you want to get to know them, something like this will pop up. The Ted Lasso, the David story, the Trader Joe's story, any story. Um, I would say for me, the, the thank you email, or for me, it's email. Tara, I don't necessarily care for a card because I think it's asking too much. And honestly, I'm not sure if anybody's in the office, so those cards are going to sit there for a while. To me, a, an email that sticks out, sticks out is the email you've actually acknowledged and you send thank you note, timely, within a couple of days. I'm not saying within hours, but within a couple of days, not two weeks later. And it's personal and it's short and sweet. Um, I wish I had something, you know, profound to add to this. I don't, um, they, they all hit it on the head. It just takes a little bit of extra effort. Just a, just a little bit. Um, of that human connection. You know, um, I sent an email last summer about like I keep warm, um, about my favorite ice cream and what I was doing that summer and asked what they were doing. And now I have a, a full-time employee that started last year. And, and every time they go and get ice cream, they'll send me a selfie of them eating the ice cream. And I think it's hilarious. I love it. But I think that it's just those little things that people connect on that helps helps you remember them and like it's from the beginning I, I forgot who said it's it's who you know I think Tara said it it's all about who you know and and also who knows you especially in recruiting um I don't know who else is left in this group to chat about this but I'll just leave it open yeah I I don't have much else to add to this um the only thing that kind of like sticks out to me um is that 
um, kind of what Iman said, you don't need to send it seconds after your interview ends. Um, we, I personally, if it's one or two days and, and I get it, I, I'm still like, okay, great. They, they're showing interest in Markham. They still want um, to kind of keep that relationship going here. Um, and then the only other thing that myself and my other kind of HR campus recruiters um, look at is if your communications with us are grammatically correct. Um, sometimes you might send this email right after and just type it really quick because you want to get it out. Um, we, we look at that. We want to make sure that we're hiring people who look over their work and make sure that they that everything they send is correct and as it should be. Um, so that's the only thing I would add to that. Yeah, I wanna throw in, please make sure you address it to the correct person and the correct firm. Yeah. I cannot tell you how many times I've gotten a Baker Tilly or a Cone Resnick or, or just address to somebody else completely, just proofread, just make sure before you send that email that the cover letter and everything looks right. Yeah, and I guess if I could try to try to put a bow on all of this, it's all it's all really good stuff. And I, I I feel like there's definitely like a common thread and a theme here, and it's just being genuine. I mean, this has been repeated over and over and over. By the way, if at the end of an event you don't really want to reach out to the recruiter, then don't. Like if you like you're not adding anything and you're just doing it to do it, or you genuinely didn't like the firm, like don't do it. Like that, you're no one is forcing you to do this. And it's, it's all of us have kind of mentioned, it is nice when we receive an email where there was a connection, there, there is something to share, or there is something to build on and talk about. But if there really isn't, and there just wasn't any sizzle or spark or magic there, like, you don't really have to. Like, don't, don't do it just because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, genuinely try to build relationships. And one way of doing that is that follow-up email where it feels like you, you are willingly doing this not like you're a you know prisoner of war and being forced to read a script saying how well you're being treated, right? So like just just be honest about it and genuine. And if that comes out in the email afterwards, good, great. But don't feel like you have to do it. Uh, thank you all. I learned a lot from your advice. And now I will pass the floor for the student to ask the question. So if you have any question, please use the room raise hand feature and we will call your name one by one to unmute yourself. So if you are uncomfortable unmuting, you can type your question in the chat and we will read the question for you. Gemma, we'll start with you. Hi, thank you all for coming. Um, I'm just really genuinely curious, like, I don't know what you guys been doing virtually, but since busy season, the first round ended, have you guys done anything as a company, as a firm to celebrate it, to like go out for lunch or just like a little get together or happy hour or anything? I haven't been in the office, but I saw that a bunch of people on their Insta stories posted that they went <laughs> that they went out, had some drinks. So I think we did celebrate in person, but I'm not part of that service line, so I didn't go. But yeah, definitely always drinks after busy season. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we uh, we had a Knott's Berry Farm celebration, which was interesting. I <laughs> seems very random to me. But everyone seemed to really like it after that after that past uh, 915 deadline. Yeah, we um, after busy season, uh, the LA office did a, a beer, a virtual beer tasting um, with a brewery out in San Luis Obispo. Um, and then earlier this month, we did our promotions party. And so we had like a virtual um, event where we had this like magician illusionist person who did an, an hour long event for us. Um, and then we kind of share events with our other offices and do kind of merged things with them. But that's what we've done so far. <laughs> so we've done a lot of virtual events to celebrate not only in the busy season, but in general, a lot of teams do their own happy hour get to know you. A lot of the game virtually, uh, we haven't done much in person as a firm, 
However, teams have done small gatherings, partners taking teams out to, to lunch, to dinner, inviting them over to their house. Um, we're still not allowing gatherings of more than 20 people. So it's not easy to do that. However, in California, when for the summer interns, we had a summer intern outing in one of the parks here in Los Angeles where we had a lot of games. We had professionals come and meet the interns um, and they, they had a, a great day. But as a firm, we're not organizing anything firm specific or firm sponsored. It's more team based. I think you're seeing a lot of the, the, the leadership at the local levels kind of stepping up and doing something for that smaller locale. Look, everything is just on a smaller scale, yep. right? So for all of the firms here that are fairly large in size, yeah, probably not the best idea for all of us to get together to try to get all of us together. But I, I know all of the, the leadership in the firm and the partners and the managers are very concerned about that connectivity. And so, yes, there's from, from you know, when it broke out in March 2020 through to today, we're starting to see certainly more smaller scale gatherings of people trying to stay connected any way we can. And that makes me really happy to see because I think that's probably the reason most of us got into this business was to feel connected to people. And so very happy to see that starting to come back um, even if it's in a smaller scale for now. Yeah, same here. I mean, we have pretty much the same policy as EMOTS. Like you're not allowed to gather with more than 20 people at a time. Um, so I know like the teams are kind of doing their own things and then smaller offices are kind of trying to get together as an office. Otherwise, it's really the teams that are doing their own outings and lunches and yeah. Thank you all so much for your answers. Love to hear lots of happy hours and drinking for <laughs> celebration. All right. So for our next question, it's going to be calling from coming from Miss Magali Fernandez. Yes. Go ahead and ask the question. Um, it's nice to hear from you guys, and I really enjoyed those insightful answers. I did want to ask because. Um, you mentioned in mod to look at something that you're that is important to you and something that's important to me is mental wellness and like you know my health and so i'm asking i guess my question is what do you your companies each company do to promote like mental and like physical uh well-being sure so a few things, we've done a few things. And it's interesting that mental health became an issue after COVID. Mental health has always been an issue in, in this industry specifically with the long hours. But I'm glad that something happened that put all these together and allowed firms to address it. Um, one is awareness, obviously, awareness across the firm at all levels from leadership all the way down to interns. Two, we've done a few things. We've given a few... So in the summer, we've done the Focus Fridays where people were not taking any meetings internally or externally, focusing on their own work or personal needs, taking a day off or what have you. Uh, we've added a few holidays throughout the year. We're actually shutting down the firm the whole week of Thanksgiving coming up. Um, so the whole week will be closed. Uh, we've added a few resources for the team, but we have a Headspace membership for everyone here at Code Resnick to use it and tailor it to their needs. Uh, but overall, I would say it's the awareness and the fact that every at every level within each team, people are talking about mental health, making sure that you integrate work and life in a meaningful way and not something that's detriment to your personal life. I'm having those conversations every day on my own team uh, where I'm urging people to make sure that they put barriers around work because it absolutely invaded our lives since March of 2020. I had to do it myself where I had to put boundaries, make sure that I was ending my day at a certain time because work is here and work will be here tomorrow. So a lot of tools, Headspace was a big one, um, a full membership to, to Headspace, tailored to your own needs and a few other holidays and the week of Thanksgiving shutting down the firm completely. And the, the concept behind shutting the, the firm down is we can tell people to take PTO, but if I'm taking PTO, but nobody else is, I can tell you I was on PTO for two weeks. I came back to 1,700 emails. And so the week of Thanksgiving, nobody's sending emails to anybody. 
everybody's taken off and nobody's worrying about what's going on here at Khan Resnick to, to be able with be with their families and celebrate the holiday. That's great. I love to hear that uh, a lot of firms are taking a notice to mental health. I know it's very important. And our next question is going to be coming from Ms. Pai Al Singh. Go ahead and ask. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your great suggestion regarding this whole recruiting process. So my question is about the recruiting. Like I appreciate uh, Accounting Association. They organize this event. So uh, inside the corporation, uh, do they organize these kind of networking event like in, inside the same firm with different offices and different locations? Yeah, that's a good question. So we have a lot of internal clubs like at Armonino, for example. So there's a lot of things like the Accounting Association. I mean, not quite the same, but you can be involved in extracurricular things. So like I'm part of our grants committee, which is through our Armonino Foundation, and I help approve grants that come in through the foundation. So um, you can also be part of the culture committee. You can be part of our ideal committee, which focuses on diversity and inclusion. You can be part of the bridge, which is about women's uh, career advancement. So there's a bunch of different things and they host social events and um, they host book clubs, they host happy hours, they host cocktail making events and sushi making events and all kinds of things. So um, just because you leave college and the accounting association doesn't mean that you won't have something similar. And I think a lot of different firms do that. So yeah, it makes it fun. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Would any other firms like to answer? Um, sure. So we don't have, you know, networking in the true sense of like audit and tax get together and like talk about what they're doing to each other. Um, there, but there is, you know, some type of uh, employee referral, like internal program. So if there's something else that you want to try or you want to internally apply to a different role and like change service lines, I thought that's kind of where you might have been going with that. Yes, question. yes, yeah. Um, so we've got that kind of piece of internal mobility. Um, and then same to, same to Tara's point, we've got, you know, those employee resource groups that the, the green teams and the, the women's advantages and the philanthropies and social clubs. And so there's, there's definitely that piece as well that's more of the social networking and not as much as, as professional. Yeah, it's, it's, thank you. I was like looking for this kind of thing, like for the rotation or if you want to switch, then yes, thank you. I think sometimes it happens organically. The, the, what, I've know, what I've experienced over the years in this industry, as you come into the industry and you start building your reputation and your brand, you work in audit, tax, or advisory, but in reality, you're not working in isolation. The audit teams and the tax teams collaborate on a lot of the work and a lot of the client work. The audit teams and the advisory teams collaborate also on certain projects. So eventually you end up being visible to those teams and to the opportunities they have. And therefore, some, sometimes I've noticed people asking for, I want Payal to come on my team because we've worked with her on certain projects and she's done a phenomenal job. They come to you usually and they ask if you're interested, but it happens sometimes organically in addition to it being your responsibility to not work internally. Oh, that sounds great, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, and our next question is going to be coming from Liana Sahakian. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for the presentation and all the good advices. Um, so I guess my question will be a little bit personal. Um, it's about like whether choosing between full-time staff position or internship. So I'm a senior this year, uh, and I might be able to graduate in summer but I already sent out my application for 2020 summer, a 2022 summer. So I guess my question is uh, whether, what is like easier to apply to and get? Is it, would that be like internship? Cause that's what I've been told so far that getting internship is much easier than a full-time position. I don't know if I agree that one is easier than the other. Like it, it kind of depends. Like in a lot of cases, the internship is more difficult to get than the full-time position. Um, in some cases, the associate position maybe. I mean, 
easier in what sense that there are fewer applicants that the, the or anything like that so like i i don't know if i'd say one is necessarily easier than the other i think i'd repeat kind of that a lot of what that is about is kind of when you when you're eligible to take the cpa exam i guess if you want to get cute with it and i do this with a lot of candidates where let's say you're you're graduating in the summer of 2022 but you're graduating in May because you're in a semester system at TSUN, right? And the firm says, okay, great. Your start date is going to be, you're going to come on board with uh, with Markham. Your start date is going to be in July. And you say, well, wait a minute now. I graduated in May. That doesn't really give me a whole lot of time to actually take the CPA exam if I start in July. Would it be okay if I started in January instead? Maybe I did a little bit of an internship during a tax deadline or something like that while I'm taking the exam. So in that case, you're starting to use the internship as leverage in terms of doing what's best for you to get the CPA exam done. And in most cases, I think you'll find that the firm that you're recruiting with or the firms that you're recruiting with are open to helping you drop into a situation to pass your exam. I promise you that uh, to me, the single most important, important thing at working at any firm here is not that you stay with us for your career. It's that you pass your CPA exam. And I don't care if you stay here for, you're only here for two years, you make it to a senior associate, but as long as you pass your exams, that's time, it can be time well spent here. And so kind of when in the setup to that, I think that the balance between internship and full-time position a lot of that is based around strategy of taking your CPA exams and passing your CPA exams. And I think you'll find that firms are willing to work with you on that. Does that help at all? I mean, it's, again, I don't think one is necessarily easier the, than the other. It really depends year by year, office to office, firm to firm, department by department. Yeah, it does help. I guess I'm just gonna have to try, try my luck. I also yeah. wanna throw out, you know, Oh, sorry, Garrett. Yeah, have, have that conversation, Leanna. Like, make, make sure that you're upfront and honest when you are talking to recruiters or the people interviewing you about where you're at, what you're thinking, what you're trying to do, and why you're trying to do that. And I think you'll find that most of us are going to be flexible and work with you on it. Sorry, Lindsay, go ahead. I was going to say the same thing. I was going to say communicate with your recruiters, first and foremost. And also, you know, on a more personal basis, if you don't yet know specifically or exactly, oh, I really want to go into tax or this or that, maybe an internship is better for you to start out with. Look at your resume and see, you know, have I done this yet? What do I want to try before I graduate maybe or before I get those 150? And like, look and see, um, maybe you haven't tried a service line or a size of a firm and you want to try a local firm first and see what that's like. And so back to looking within and figuring out what exactly you want. That's a, a more personal choice. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And our next question is going to come from Sarab Harachunian. You could go ahead and ask your question. I believe you are muted, sir. Oh, I'm so sorry about it. Uh, thank you for amazing presentation. Um, I'm interested for a full-time offer in tax. And my question is going to be a bit of boring, and I'm so sorry about it, but I have heard a lot that uh, associates are complaining about um, that when they are doing the return, basically they are going back to the previous year, and pretty much they are doing the same thing as, as it is in the previous year. And I really like to un understand why I'm doing and what I'm doing. And what would be your advice to someone who really likes to dig deep and understand what, what he's doing? I can speak to that a little because I used to do tax. Um, so you, you are doing, and Garrett, I know you can speak to this too because you did accounting, but you are kind of, kind of repeating the same thing as the prior year, but um, you really need that to learn the foundation of what you're doing. Like the learning curve in accounting is pretty steep. And so you're kind of just learning how um, everything works. And by doing that, you kind of have to 
copy things over and see how it's done and then absorb it and learn what you're doing. So it really will be a challenge. So don't worry. It's not like copy and paste and, and you're bored or anything. Um, it's you're definitely learning along the way, but you kind of need that to understand what you're doing. So Garrett, would you add anything from your public accounting experience? Not, not much to add. I mean, I, I, again, a, a lot of it, the, if I can highlight anything, it's that foundation. Um, I, I think that where you go with it from there is totally fine. You can go anywhere, but so much of it is about kind of the, the learning early on, building the foundation and kind of, uh, you know, learning those, those skills that are going to give you a platform to go do whatever it is you would like to eventually do. Maybe you know already, maybe you're discovering what you want to do, but that's, that's kind of why I think that's important. But also you won't be doing it alone though. Whatever you're copying privacy or not, I think that the difference here is who you're working with and are they explaining why you're doing what you're doing? I think that's the key point. Because if you end up on a team that tells you copy paste and send it to me, that's not the right approach. And I don't think any of the firms here today have that. I mean, we've been talking for the last at least six months here at Resnick about the return to the workplace or what the next normal will look like. And we've talked a lot about the apprenticeship aspect of this industry for interns and entry levels for your first three years. It's hearing what other people are talking around you in the office, listening to the questions that are being asked and the answers that are given. So I think it's not as simple as saying, I'm doing what was done last year. It's, it's a little bit deeper than that. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you for that information. And our next question is gonna come from Ms. Nona Garibian. Yes, hi everybody. And thank you so much for your time and uh, all the advices were very helpful. Um, I am uh, wondering if I can apply for internship uh, for audit um, if I am a full-time mom, is it possible to work remote part-time? Audit. No, no, no. Do you mean an internship role or a full time? For internship, for inter yeah, for internship. So, is, is there an opportunity to work part time from home? And uh, like, I know every everything now remote, but uh, it's uncertain, right? How long does it take to be remote? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I, I can only speak for Steve's, but we are doing a, a hybrid approach. So if you do want to come into the office during your part-time internship, during your busy season, we, we welcome it. And you can sign up for a hoteling space and have your own office. Um, it's not required, obviously, because we're still in this strange era. Um, but, but yes, we do offer remote, remote slash hybrid. And um, I'm not sure if I... Um... Uh, I, I'm I'm uh, I'm going to graduate next year, and if I can apply for internship now, yeah, absolutely. And Thank I think you all so much. Other recruiters would agree with that. Thank you so much. Uh, if no firms wanted to add on that, thank, I want to thank you again for all the professionals and students for being here. I will really be quickly going to take a quick picture. So if everyone could turn on their cameras, put on their happy faces, and I'll count to three, 